Hi everybody, it's Jim from Sprague Wood Turning and welcome to the 75,000 subscriber giveaway project. So this week we're going to take some of this fabulous box holder burl that you've seen me use in the past and I'm using a, a wire brush here that's mounted in my lathe just to clean up the top surface and other parts of it where it's not exactly the best looking and it does a really good job. It, it actually really brings that uh, the surface alive. And along with that, we're going to be using some of these little globes. And I've totally got this idea from Doug from Pole Barn Productions. So all the credit will go to him for, for using this. Uh, I think that it's a fantastic idea. I've seen him use it in a number of projects now. And it gives a really unique look. So I thought that I would try it. So thanks, Doug, for um, giving me some inspiration there. One thing that I am going to do is strip off the finish off of these little globes to make sure that there's no resin adhesion adhesion issues again i'm going to glue these pieces in place that way they're not going to move around and i do the same thing with these little globes um, you will find that one of them does end up being an issue in the end but overall it's not really that big of a deal but it's certainly something that i'll watch out for in the future now I need to cover this like I do every time. Uh, there's lots of scammers out there. There is only one winner and the, the, the winner will be announced at the end of this. So please do not fall victim to these scammers. If you win something from me, you will I will never ask you for the shipping. So please do not get wrapped up in that. So we're using deep cast with some fuchsia. That's where I started anyway. And um, I just wasn't real, I wanted more of a custom color. So you'll see me throw in some crystal purple right here. And I just wanted to darken that fuchsia up a little bit. It was just, I don't know, it was just kind of screaming at me. So I was just looking for just to tone that down a little bit. And then you'll also see me throw in some mother of pearl because you know that I really like these pearl pigments so the more mother of pearl the better this is actually something that i really like about resin casting where you can just kind of go with the flow and add different colored pigments to your mix and you know you end up with something that's very unique so that's why i like doing it so if you're curious i got these off of amazon uh, if I think about it, I'll put a link. The only issue with these is uh, I like the ones that Doug Moore has from Pole Barn and because his come apart. These you have to squeeze them out of the, the opening and I'm just every time I do it, I think that I'm going to break these open, but so far they haven't. Um, anyway, I would like to uh, get some like Doug has. So anyway, these, these work, don't get me wrong, but um, I like the ones... I like the fact that his are a complete round spear, sphere, and uh, these don't. You end up with a flat spot usually on the very top, but um, they work. Now this is the color that I, that I got, and it should give us some hints of purple, and certainly some magenta, and lots of mother of pearl. So we want this to be kind of shiny. I hope this is enough because if it isn't, it's going to be very hard to replicate, but uh, we'll see. What does that give us? That gives us That's almost six inches deep. So you know what? That's good. That's probably way past where it should be anyway. So uh, I know that this this burl is going to eat up a lot of this resin. So I anticipated dropping off probably another inch or so. And uh, check that out. Hmm. I might just throw uh, the rock on here just to make sure that things don't uh, move around. But we'll see you guys. Three days. Alrighty, it has been four days or something like that. So let's get let's get a rock out of here and see what we're dealing with. Now sometimes 
Ooh. Wow, that's a lot more pinkier than I was thinking it was going to be. Hmm. That's all right. Pink is cool too. Sometimes these come out of this bucket pretty easy and sometimes they don't. Let's see what we're dealing with this time. There, that wasn't all that bad. Well, I think that might look pretty cool. But we will have to see. Definitely got some really nice swirl patterns in there, that's for sure. All right, so we got a center here. Something like that. Since we've got straight wood at the very top of this form, I decided just to use the 5 8 bowl gouge from David Ellsworth. And uh, just to get rid of the majority of that before we get into the resin, then you'll see me switch to the Hercules. Uh, you know, I know that some people really like to see me turn with the gouge. And I certainly could do a project entirely with this gouge. But when it comes to these carbide tools, uh, you, you know, uh, here's the bottom line. I, I'd sooner be turning than sharpening. And, you know, I don't know how many times I'd have to sharpen to turn something like this. So that's why I like to use these carbide tools from Hunter Tool Systems. And again, there is a link in the description to 10% off your next order. If you want to get one of these, this is the Hercules. And if you're curious, this is actually the largest 5 8 diameter one. That's the one that I prefer. And uh, it's a fantastic tool. So as you watch me whittle this away, I have some other news. I think it's actually really fantastic news. So, you know, there's there's a lot of people that really don't care for these long videos and the voiceovers, and I 100% get that. And I was contacted by Voob Media, and they're actually going to take these videos and condense them. And we're going to basically put them on my Facebook, my business Facebook page. And that way, people that are not really so much into the how-to and the voiceovers and, you know, all of that that goes along with that, you can certainly go to my business Facebook page, and it's just under Spragwood Turning if you're curious. And people will be able to view these videos in a very, very condensed form. Now, I know that, you know, these videos here on YouTube are not going anywhere. I'm doing, I'm leaving them exactly the way that you see them. I, I think that doing these voiceovers is important, but I also understand that a lot of people don't care for them. So hopefully this will satisfy those people. So yeah, I mean, it's, um, I didn't really know how to approach this and I'll be honest with you, like as far as editing more videos uh, and getting more content up on a different platform is just, you know, I'm, I'm at the max right now. Uh, I'm even having a hard time answering comments and, you know, that's great. Keep commenting, please, because that certainly helps out my channel. But, you know, I, I find that, you know, most of my weekend, or not most of my weekend, but a lot of my weekend is answering comments. And, but, you know, I've asked for them, and thank you so much for doing that. And please don't stop commenting, because it certainly helps me beat the algorithm here in YouTube. So there's the first real look at our project, and, you know, I'm thinking this thing's going to look pretty cool. Uh, at the time, I didn't really recognize the fact that by cutting through 
one of those globes that was going to turn it more into an egg shape at the end. But, you know, I wanted to try this and uh, just in the future, I will certainly give that some more thought and address it accordingly. So that is the first of two tenons that I'm going to put on this piece, one on the bottom and one on the top. And that's so that I can grab the, the base with the chuck and I'll be able to grab the lid with the chuck as well. Um, just so that we can finish the underside of the lid and of course hold the bowl and do what you've got to do with that. But um, yeah, I mean, there's not really a whole lot new here so i'm just going to be quiet for a second and let you just listen to the lathe So here I'm using the 3 16 inch parting tool from Crown. I do have a thinner parting tool, but to work with it far off of the tool rust, like you see me eventually getting to here, can be quite tricky. Um, one time in the past, it actually got grabbed out of my hands. So, you know, I, I, I'm not a huge fan of it, even though, you know, we're, we're going to be losing a, a fair bit of space here. I think that this this is the safer way to do things and you know just finish things off with a handsaw there's no need to get uh, too aggressive here now before I move this outboard I want it to core out the inside of this and um, I think I started with a three quarter inch bit and then up to an inch and a half and then you'll also see me use a three inch bit here and I use that just basically so that I could spin this around and put a glue block on it and it was basically centered there's the three inch bit and that thing was just vibrating I was that tenon wasn't really big on the very bottom of this and I was a little worried about it snapping off but we eventually get the job done so I'm just cleaning off the base here so that I can get uh, one of my glue blocks on the bottom of it and uh, we'll be able to move this outboard I'm just using some 60 grit there to make sure that there's good adhesion there's a hot melt glue and if you haven't seen this before the hot melt glue is melted in an electric frying pan and I dip the waste block in it and stick it on the bottom of the bowl. So as you can see, we're now outboard and I was actually surprised when uh, I turned this thing around. And again, if you're wondering why I turn on the outboard end of my lathe, it's because I'm left-handed. So I'm turning on a 20 inch general that has left-hand threads on the outboard end. So for me, it is a lot more comfortable to do than working over the lathe bed. So that's why I work outboard. Now, that hot melt glue that's on the very base tends to clog up those small little cutters. So I like to get rid of that with the gouge and then go back with the carbide tools from Hunter Tool Systems. And um, I think that we probably lost maybe a quarter of an inch in the overall diameter of this. Uh, but, you know, I was, again, I was quite surprised. I didn't think that it was going to be so far out of round, but hey, uh, you just got to roll with the punches when it comes to this kind of stuff.
I should also mention that for the whole entirety of this turning, it was turned at 750. I wasn't able to go higher than that because of vibration. And that was mainly due because one of those burl sections absorbed a lot more resin than the other one did. And that was causing it to really kind of uh, be out of be out of round or out of balance, if you will. So ideally, you know, you'd like to turn maybe something like this at 1,000, 1,200 RPM. But I just wasn't able to do it with this piece. So we're just going to whittle this down. Um, I went a little thinner in the base than I probably wanted to. In the end, it's not a problem at all. It doesn't, you can't, there's no damage there at all. But uh, that's something that, you know, when you're doing your drilling, make sure that you really pay attention to what you're doing and, and not get kind of distracted because that's kind of what happened to me. I got, I got distracted and, and I went a little deeper than I should have. But in the end, it worked out fine. There was no issues. Also, uh, last week, lots of great comments on what to do with the trailer pieces that I showed, one in particular. And um, somebody came up with a great idea to maybe turn it in, uh, turn it into like a lamp base. So, you know, my thought process would be to maybe cast it in and maybe a clear resin or, you know, a translucent res resin. And then... Um, you know turn it into a lamp base and so you know I, I don't know it's still um it's a difficult piece to figure out I know that I've said this in the past, but I'll cover it again. So the, the Hercules, it essentially can be treated like a bowl gouge. And if you look at the cuts that I'm taking with this Hercules, they're very similar to what you would do with a bowl gouge. So if you're familiar with a bowl gouge, you really should have no problem transitioning to the Hercules. The, it's, you know... It's the same principle, riding the bevel, as long as you do that, you're not going to get a catch. I do find that in the transition area, in the belly area of the of the bowl, sometimes it wants to push back a little harder than maybe a gouge would. But for the most part, treat it like a gouge and you'll have success. We're sanding from 60 to 800 on this piece. And of course, these are the three and a half inch dimple discs from sandpaper.ca. I started to sand this and I'm like, oh yeah, I don't think I ever tr did actually trim the very top of this. So that's why I went back and had to do some trimming there because well, I totally forgot about it. And again, all of the links you need for any of the products you see here on this channel are down in the description. So feel free to go down there and have a look. And same with Designer Epoxy, another fantastic product. I'm so glad that Gabriel has sponsored my channel. A fabulous, fabulous um, resin. And of course, can't have, um, can't be a wood turner without CA glue. And that's where Starbond comes in. So, you know, I'm really happy that all of these companies have come on board and sponsored my channel. It's really been a help to me and hopefully you guys have, have gotten some money back from from them as well. So here I'm just using the parting tool to cut in where the lid is going to sit. Uh, I don't know why this footage is out of focus, but I had to get in, in there or else you wouldn't really understand what's happening. And just a little bit of fine sanding with 800 grit just to take away any sharp edges. You want that to remain pretty crisp in there. Then we're going to take some... Triple E buffing compound from the be all buffing system. Do the inside and the outside. I technically really didn't need to do the outside because you'll see later on. And uh, cleaning up with some denatured alcohol. 
So there's no finish on this and the reason for that is because we're going to fit the lid to this but uh, I thought that I would take it off and show you anyway. That burl is amazing stuff. I do find it very strange that one side looks like it's got zero resin penetration and this side it does and it's from the same burl. So I don't really understand that but you know <laughs> Some things, sometimes things just don't make sense. But um, when this, when the finish does go on this, I think it's going to be really cool. I certainly probably like this better than this, but I don't know. Tell me in the comments what you think. Let's work on the lid. Now I can't be real aggressive here because I don't have a lot to uh, hold on to here, but should be all right. I should also mention about the new videos that are going to be on Facebook. Uh, I don't know exactly when those are going to be up and running, but I will let you know. I'm hoping within a week or two, there should be a bunch of videos on there, previous videos that have been redone. And uh, so anyway, it's, it's exciting and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So this is the bottom of the lid and it was oversized by probably an eighth of an inch uh, compared to the body. And the reason for that is I wanted to mount it onto the body of the dish and then trim the two of them together so that they're a perfect match. And they were sanded, or sorry, this was sanded from 60 to 800 just like the body was. And then of course, triple E buffing compound, cleaning up with a denatured alcohol. And now here we're cutting in the in the lid where it's going to sit into the body. And, you know, this is always something that just remember that when you're sizing these pieces, what you take off on one side is being taken off on the other. So minor adjustments really can affect the fit here. And eventually I, I miss the fit, um, but you'll see how I correct that. And it's, you know, it's not a, it's not an end of the world thing, but uh, it's certainly something that you really got to watch because, I mean, just the tiniest little touch and then that's it. It'll be too loose. Well, I was hoping for a tighter fit than this, but you know, I, with really light cuts. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the outside here until it matches the body of the of the covered dish, and then I'll run a bead of tape around it, and then before I do anything on the top, and then hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> this isn't going to come flying off. Anyway, that's it for me today. I'm beat. See you tomorrow. All right, so it's the next day, and <sighs> overnight this seems to have uh, loosened up, which was kind of strange. I didn't think that that would happen, but it did. So we'll give it two pieces of this. And I know some people are probably screaming at home, line up the, line up the balls, line up the balls. So that's what I'll do, try to. They are certainly gonna be distorted at the top. Yeah, that's gonna to be tough. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna come off now. All right, look, it's an egg. That's a ball and this is an egg. Very, very light cuts here. As Soon as I get this down close, very close to what this is, I'll start sanding it and then I'll probably just go across it so that it's all, doesn't. There, you can't feel any ridges. And then like I said yesterday, I'll throw some tape on here and I think we should be good to go. In theory, possibly. I guess we'll find out.
So, like I said, very light cuts. And if you look at the orientation of the Hercules, you are very, very, very unlikely to get a catch when it's in that configuration. And just showing those really fine shavings, which is exactly what you want. I did find that that, that blue paper towel was kind of really irritating me. So I tried to cut some of it away. Eventually, I just, you know, I get it down close and I say, okay, I'm going to go to the sandpaper. So it was sanded from 60 to 800 again. That's why I said I didn't really need to do the, uh, the buffing on the outside. Electrical tape is your friend here. All right, let's do the top. I should also mention, uh, if you go back to where I was cutting the lid, I never go from the base out to the top. If you look at it, it's generally from the very top of the lid in towards the body. So you're essentially pushing that lid onto the body. If you try and go in the other direction, if you get a catch, it could definitely be a devastating one. So as long as you always go from the top inside um, or down the the body of the, the piece you're working on, you shouldn't have any issues. You may notice that the tape has been removed and the reason why I removed the tape is for the sanding. And so here I am putting it back on because I still have to cut a hole for where the little knob's gonna go. Now this was my bright idea to just grab this with a pair of vice grips. Uh, really, I should have just used my parting tool. It would, have, it would have been fine here, but anyway, I figured I would try this drill bit. I ended up cleaning it with a very small little skew that I have. And this again is a piece of box elder from the same tree. And here I am sizing for the hole that I made. Again, this is something you really want to sneak up on because you definitely don't want this to be loose when it goes into the, into the lid. And then once I get that, you'll see me use a little scoochie gouge. And I mostly use this on center work for like pepper mills and, you know, turnings like this. And it's just a combination skew and gouge. And you'll also notice that I decided to leave the very top of the knob natural. Uh, I thought that that would be fitting for this piece as well. All right, now's the fun part, trying to get this off and not ruin anything. This was actually made a little easier because when I was trying to cut off or pull off that paper towel, it actually left a few little spots. So it gave me a spot to stick the flat tip screwdrivers into. No problem. I know there's probably some people who are probably gonna hate this, but I thought that it was important to kind of have a textured top on this. And I didn't want anything super huge either, so. Anyway, all I'm going to use is some Starbond Thick. You can't really see it all that well, but I actually sprayed the knob with the accelerator. That way, when it went into the lid, it set immediately. There you go. Let's get our first coat of finish on this. Bring this alive. All right, this week we're going to be using the Waterlux Medium Sheen. All 
All right, well, there is the, the bowl part of our lit it dish. Incredible burl. What do you think about those little planets I added? Totally inspired by Doug Moore from Pole Barn Productions. I like it. All right, let's do the lid. The battery died right in the middle of talking about this. So um, I'll start over. What I'll do is I'll put two coats on the way I did and that hopefully will be enough. And uh, then I'll flip it over and hold the vacuum chuck and then do the back side. I did do around the, uh, the lip area. So we'll see you tomorrow for the second coat. This will be more directed at the new people, but between every coat of finish that I put on, I'll buff with a triple E buffing compound and then clean the surface with denatured alcohol before the next coat of finish goes on. So there's the lid. It's still very, very pretty for sure. All right, let's do the uh, base. One thing of note, I do find that the gloss, Waterlux gloss, covers better than the medium sheen. Must be maybe because there's more solids in it. Regardless, I really like this finish too. Guess what? It's still beautiful. Yeah, I'm really liking the globe thing. It's too bad that it's going to be like an egg at the top, but uh, regardless, it's quite a conversation piece. All right, if there is a third coat, I will do it the same, and then uh, we'll see what I'm doing the bottom. If you are curious, there were in fact three coats of finish put onto this piece and here I am parting it off and then just using the handsaw to finish it off and then I've got it mounted on my vacuum chuck so that I can easily do the bottom and not mark up the bowl at all. And the bottom was sanded from 60 to 800 just like the rest of the piece. All right, let's find out who's going to be the winner of this fabulous little covered dish. Okay, since the last draw, there has been seven videos, including the 70,000 subscriber giveaway bowl video. And these are the, the names that the random YouTube comment picker has kicked out. Let's draw a name. So here's the bowl that we're going to be using to draw the name from. This has actually been one of the more popular bowls on my channel. Probably could have sold this a hundred times or so. Uh, but it's in my personal collection. So here's the names. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And the winner of the 75,000 subscriber giveaway bowl is Terry Priest. To come in. You are the winner of the 75,000 subscriber giveaway bowl. Congratulations. Please send me an email to spraguewoodturning at gmail.com and I will get your shipping address and get your bowl mailed out to you. Congratulations and um, keep on commenting and you never know, you might get a chance uh, to win a bowl. All right, let's have a last little chat about this week's project. Nice little giveaway dish, covered dish, if you will. 
if you look real closely, and I don't know if the camera is going to be able to pick it up or not, but there's just fine little bubbles in these globes that I that I made that are totally inspired by Doug Moore, and uh, the reason for that is because. That resin was starting to set up and I didn't get it into the pressure pot in time. So there's just these tiny little bubbles. You can barely see them. So it's not really that big of a deal. Really like the top of this. The resin's really cool. And of course that burl is pretty fantastic, I must say. Here is the very bottom. As you can see, there's no finish. So uh, as per normal, I'm running out of time. <laughs> And I'm sure there's going to be lots of comments about my Finio game here again. And um, some people are probably thinking I probably got it, could have got away with not putting one on there. But, you know, this is this is six inches across across and five inches tall to the Finio and three, three and a half inches to the to the top of the, the lid here. So, you know, that's a bit much for some people to maybe get off. So that's why I think that it needed some sort of a knob or a Finio or something. So that's why I did that. Uh, I do find it really odd that, you know, you've got real good saturation and penetration of the resin on this piece and not this piece. It's from the same tree, folks. So I don't know what to say. Maybe, maybe this burl here was maybe down on the ground and more had more maybe dry rod in it than the other piece. I don't know. Under the lid. Still need one more coat of finish and then it will be ready to go to its new home. And there is the inside. Box Elder Burl. Can't go wrong with it. Really, really happy with this. Uh, the next one that we will do, I will ensure that these little globes go further down on the casting and then that way we don't have to worry about the distortion when you cut the lid off. It is only on the one side and I actually like the colors in there. When I first put them in, I'll be honest with you, I was thinking eh, this might be, might clash a bit, but I actually like it. So um, that's it for this week. Uh, please take the time. Uh, today is Remembrance Day here in Canada and in the Commonwealth and other parts of the world. So please take a Take the time to uh, remember the fallen and the people that are still feeling the effects of war throughout the world. Um, as a soldier for 24 years in the Canadian military, uh, I've certainly seen my fair bit of carnage over the years. So uh, any support we can give to our soldiers would certainly be greatly appreciated by me and by others. All right, well, that's it. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know what we're doing next uh, week. Oh, don't forget to uh, put designer epoxy down in the comments down below to be entered for the the three gallon kit at 80,000 subscribers. And speaking about subscribers, hey, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing that. I looked at my analytics and I think only about 16% of the people that are watching my videos are actually subscribed. So please subscribe and hey, that thumbs up button certainly helps with my channel as well. All right, well, that's it. Take care, stay safe, don't forget the bell. Please share my videos with your friends. That is the largest and best way for me to build my subscription base. So I would really appreciate it if you do that. And we'll see you next week. Remember the following.